Hey guys, Mason here. I'm going to get some mods done to the KLR here this winter. Alright. Uh, first, I better clean this up. Just a sec. There we go. Alright. I've had some questions lately about uh, how I keep the bike charged and what I do with my batteries over the winter. So this flashing green light down here under the bike was uh, noticed and commented on. And what this is, is it's actually a voltage meter. And when it's flashing green like that, uh, the battery's at 100%. Uh, there's a 75, 50, 25 mark and it goes from amber to red. I think it actually switches to red at 50%. Um, the thing I like about this the most through the winter is, is that I don't have to have the bike's battery on charge all of the time because I, I'll show you guys in a second but I also charge a lot of other batteries around here so it frees up one of the ports on my charging system if this one doesn't need maintaining so at a glance as I'm walking back and forth through the shop I can just see if that's green if it's green I don't worry about it as soon as I see it go amber then I plug it back in and give it a quick cycle and then it holds again for another month at least before it even seems to drop uh, so it works really well um, the other reason why I have this here is that I can quickly disconnect this and this, sorry, shop heater. So when I disconnect this, I've effectively disconnected all of the electrical components that I've added to the bike. So with the exceptions of the heated grips, which are a direct line, this unplugs everything else. It unplugs um, all my auxiliary lighting and switches. It unplugs this wire that runs to my tank bag when it's on the bike, which I just keep using the same fittings and I'll get to why in a second. Um, so my tank bag goes on, this plugs in, and then all my stuff in my tank bag charges my uh, batteries and uh, boost packs. I could charge the cameras in there. My Senna has a plug on the front. If it runs out of battery, I can just whip up and plug into my helmet. So everything is just in my Nomad, my Moscow Moto Nomad tank bag, and it's all ready to go. I just plug it in and everything starts charging. Um, and when it's not in use, it just gets capped. This gets can get tucked away up in under the front here when I'm riding without my tank bag, and it's all good. The other reason for this disconnect is that if I'm having an electrical problem on the trail, I can unplug this and isolate anything I've ever done to the bike away from the rest of the machine, try to get it running, and see if there's a drain from anything that's, an, that's a, uh, an accessory. So it gives me a point to start troubleshooting from. So that's why I have this. Now when this gets plugged back in, then all my accessories work. The floodlights, for example, and I unplug this and it's off. So that's that's my main disconnect from anything that I've ever put on the bike. So if I want to charge it, what I use to charge all my batteries is this. It's a NOCO Genius. Now this is the G4, which gives you four banks of outlets. and then you can buy the cabling and the clips and the adapters and anything else that you need. I use it to charge my boost pack, all the batteries for all the bikes with the exceptions of the KLR, that bike's, the battery's still in that bike. Um, some batteries for other equipment around the place and then these two big six volts here that are run in series are uh, the ones off of the travel trailer. So it, they come out of it in the winter too and come in here and uh, this not only charges them but it maintains them and uh, it's a smart battery charger so it just does everything it needs to do. The only thing you can't do with this is you can't boost with it because it just puts out a very very low uh, trickle. I think it's it's a 4.4 amp but that's divided amongst the four banks. Oh, see I just unplugged that. Here I'll show you. So this is uh, this is bank two. I leave little cards with them because it's very confusing with all the wires as I switch from battery to battery so I move the little tags around. But this was two. We'll put it back on there. It says that it's good and now it'll start a, it'll start a testing cycle. And 
and it will go through and work its way right up through the whole little bit of uh, testing. You'll see the numbers go up 25, 50, 75, 100 if it's good. If it's not good and it needs charging, it'll just remain on whatever percentage it's at and as it charges. So yeah, that's what I use. Um, I've got some extra cable. I run it out and uh, I can do some trickle charging on the equipment and the machines. Uh, number three is right up. So we'll take this off and I'll show you what I do for the bike. I just unplug here. Plug that in. Number three, it's good now. It's going to start its cycle. You can see number two that I just reconnected is full and uh, it'll test the top up and if it doesn't need it, the light will just go green like that and it'll sit on maintain mode. So three is the KLR right now that I just plugged in and it's working its way up through the range too. So yeah, that's it. I've got the little squids battery down in here and the one for big squid and uh, actually two for the CRF 150 one out of Mrs. Mason's bike uh, one out of the ZX11 that's in the basement and a spare or my OEM KLR battery which I went to a uh, AGM battery that's the old liquid battery and it's still decent so it's there as a backup if I ever come out in the spring and find that my AGM's dead I've got one to keep running. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the look at the charging bank bay here. I know it's a mess, but uh, it is what it is. It works great, and because it's always in service and everything's getting moved around, there's just no way to possibly get it much cleaner than that. It just keeps uh, it just keeps getting tangled. So when it gets real bad, I dig it out and clean it up and start again. So yeah, that's the charging system works really well. I even have one I even have one of these on the deer and as you can see it's ready for a little top up too. So that's that. I just thought I'd show you guys that. Um, maybe clear up any confusion as to why there's a blinking green light. No Melon 1. It's not a government tracking device. Yeah. Yeah, it's back up now. It would be good for another month. I can roll the cable up and put it to use on a different battery. So there you go, guys. That's the charging system. Kind of a fun little thing. Works really well. Um, I will say it's violently expensive, but to have four charging ports like that, to me, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, you know, in the spring of the year when I'm trying to get things up and running around here, it it's pretty handy. You could do it with a single bank if you just had one one bike or just a couple pieces of equipment that you could move it around between. They do a single, they do a double, and then they do the four. And uh, like I said, it's not cheap, but it is, I think it's well worth the money because it's intelligent, it won't overcharge them, it doesn't harm the battery, it keeps the trickle and it maintains them. So yeah, that's what I do. Right on! That's it for me. Let you guys go. Bye for now. Mason out. Hey guys, if you liked that video, hit the thumbs up button for us. It goes a long way towards helping out the channel. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button in the upper corner for new videos every Sunday. Be glad to have you along for the ride. Oh.